Hello everyone, my name is Pixorifs and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you guys are having a good day. We're here in our wonderful new end portal room and thank you guys so much for the feedback on this. I loved a few of your suggestions including putting a shulker box over there on the end city to simulate a shulker on the entrance. I like that a lot. That is of course a regular shulker box, it's not a shulker mob or anything. I haven't transported one of those back here and I would love to put a couple of them in here but they are a little bit tricky to put position so we might have a little bit of a hard time doing that but I did notice a couple of people were worried about how well lit this area was and I've got a couple of you know a, a couple of reasons I haven't lit this area up a little bit more first of all I wanted to make sure that you can't really see the walls all that well and additional lighting tends to light up the blocks even where you know, obviously YouTube compression is making it difficult for you guys to see that, but even where there are kind of joins around the blocks there, you can start to see that stuff with minimal light nearby. So I really wanted to keep this place atmospheric. I have tried to conceal torches here and there to give it more of a glow. And yes, I have considered using end rods for that as well. I might put a couple on the city over there just to light that up a little bit more realistically. But the fact is, when we come through this portal, this room is only 33 blocks long. And remember, hostile mobs don't spawn within 23 blocks of the player so realistically there's only like a 10 block distance if that and considering that we are coming in a few blocks away from the wall here there's probably only a couple of blocks in which hostile mobs could spawn and a lot of those blocks are already either lit up or unspawnable that roof up there is made out of slabs and those slabs on the top there that create full blocks are actually too close to the ceiling likewise over here that island is only one block away from the ceiling of black concrete and it's kind of difficult for you to tell that from here because yeah it's uh, <laughs> it's such a an illusion from the black concrete that you can't really see where the ceiling is but trust me it's not spawnable up there and i had to crawl to place most of the blocks that are up there to begin with so i think as far as spawns in this room go as soon as we come through the nether portal we're blocking spawns in most of the area around here and we should be fine if a creeper or something or a zombie comes up i'll just shoot it with my bow it'll be fine and right now the glass that's down there on the floor is preventing mob spawns on the floor but there are occasionally mobs spawning there i think there's just a couple of issues in this version of minecraft with which blocks count as spawnable and which blocks don't and i think that gets fixed in the next release so anyway that's rounding up the uh, the comments that i got on yesterday's episode for now we're gonna go through to the end and we're gonna do something a little bit technical and some some very interesting mechanics that we can play with today so let's hop through the end portal generate ourselves in here and i think i saw a zombie pig man walking around over here <laughs> i think he might have despawned no he's still there this guy actually wandered through from my nether portal into the end portal so if you want any more proof that you can get mobs from the overworld into the end look no further than this zombie pig man he should not be here but he is and so what i want to look at today is which end gateways we have generated because you can get a maximum of 20 gateways from killing the ender dragon 20 times each time you do that it generates a brand new gateway for the player and you get a maximum of 20 in a ring spaced out evenly around this island after that you don't get any more end gateways generating so we want to do something a little bit special with one of these at least one of these before we uh basically generate all of them and lose the opportunity to do it for good so let's take a look at our f3 and see which way we are facing we're currently facing west so the westernmost gateway has been generated it's probably going to be easiest to do this with one of the gateways that's on one of the compass points so the south one has been generated it looks like the east one might have been as well i'm pretty sure that one there is on the eastern axis but the northern gateway has not been that's good okay so there should be a gateway there if we generated the one on the northernmost point of the island but there isn't and that means we can head out to the north and we can do a little bit of maths, a little bit of technical stuff, and a lot of block breaking. And we can basically choose where that gateway is going to generate. It's a little bit of a weird strategy, but I think it's going to pay off. And right now, I am flying over the void. And it's always kind of terrifying doing this. So I'm going to have my coordinates on just to make sure I'm not dropping below a certain height. But what we want to do... My elytra is fine, by the way. Don't worry about my elytra. Uh, what we want to do is we can fly out as far as the end islands will start to generate. And we need to look for exactly where the end islands begin and i've inadvertently gone a little bit high because i have no sense of direction here oh okay i can start to see the land masses appearing below us wow okay 
There is a lot of island over here. This could potentially be a little bit tricky, but I think when we end up generating the northern gateway, we're actually going to be sort of over here. On the x-axis, we want to be headed more towards the zero point, and that's probably about here. Yeah, I think that might be about here. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about how those bedrock end gateways generate, because that's kind of integral to what we're going to be doing here. Every time you defeat the dragon, it will spawn a new one, and each time that gateway is activated, it will generate a new one out here in the islands. So they don't exist beforehand, is what I'm saying. The central ring of gateways only appears when you beat the dragon, and the outer ring of end gateways only appears when you've been through one of those end gateways in the first place, which is why it takes a little bit of time for the uh, for the, the gateway to activate the first time around, is because not only is it generating the chunks around here, it's calculating exactly where that end gateway is going to end up. And so, with a little bit of manipulation, we can decide where it's going to be, because it has to spawn near a landmass, so it has to be near one of these islands, and is usually about a thousand blocks out from the centre, ignoring, of course, the axis that it's currently positioned on. So, in this case, what we would expect is for our end gateway in the northern section of the world, because we're facing north if we look this way, and that's about on the middle of the x-axis, we could expect the end gateway to generate around here, probably on this island. And in order to have a greater level of control over exactly where that end gateway spawns, if we take down these islands, it's not going to spawn in the usual place. It's probably going to start to pick locations that are further closer to some of these other large islands. Or alternatively, if it can find a position that is closer to the central island, it will choose that instead. And so it might be possible for us to essentially pick a custom location for the end portal gateway to spawn. And so the first step is going to be to take down these islands. And obviously this is a little bit nerve wracking working out here over the void and demolishing every last block of these things. But that's why I've got my fireworks with me. I can even farm a couple of ender pearls from the surrounding environment if I need to. Hopefully this should all go okay. And once we've taken down these islands, we need to set up a location out in the void where we can try and trick the end gateway into generating. I think just to be safe, I'm going to take out some of these other small islands as well. I think that's probably the best thing to do here. I'm not entirely certain of the maths required here, so I don't know quite how much variation it gives it to the uh, like positive or negative on the x-axis, whether it would decide to spawn a gateway over there or not. So I will do my best to take down a bunch of these little islands. Obviously taking down any of the larger landmass over here is going to be a very tedious and long task, so I'm probably not going to try that, but I think that some of the smaller islands will be fair game. There's not a huge amount of blocks in each of those. I've only got a couple of stacks from taking down one and a half of these, so we'll take down as much of that stuff as we can, and I'll be back when we're ready to attempt to spawn the gateway in a different place. And with this block removed and the fireworks in hand so I can make a speedy getaway, we have cleared out all of the islands around here. And I don't know that this was strictly necessary because in theory what we're going to be doing is tricking the portal into spawning about 250 blocks that way. But just in case, I wanted to make sure that it was going to eliminate all of the usual spawning spaces for this gateway. But the idea now is that if we line up with about there, this is roughly the path that the end gateway would take in order to find a landmass to spawn the gateway on. And that enderman just dropped himself into the void. Wow, okay. <laughs> so usually it would try and look for an island on this zero coordinate here, about a thousand blocks out. And if it didn't find something in a thousand blocks, it would go maybe a few chunks further than that until it found this landmass here. So you could expect that if we spawned the northern end gateway now and activated it by going through it, the gateway would spawn somewhere around here with a little bit of variation to either side, but this is roughly the area it would spawn. Now what we want to do is set up a platform that goes all the way back in that direction about, I don't know, 250 or so blocks? And we're going to need something to build that out of that is spawn proof, just so we don't have to deal with endermen. 
And I think the ideal block for that is going to be leaves. <laughs> leaves are available in massive quantities and they are not spawnable blocks for endermen, which makes them ideal for use in things like endermen farms and also in building a reliable pathway out here that isn't going to spawn endermen that we could look at and potentially get knocked off the platform into the void. So we're going to be using that as our platform and we're going to need to bring a little bit of this endstone with us, but really not all that much. I think the first thing to do though is to head back to the overworld and get ourselves a ton of leaves. Okay, I am back and I have leaves. I have a full shulker box of oak leaves on me and I'm going to be taking these as I go and using them to build out this platform. But first we have to get down to the level we want to start building the platform, which is going to be a bit of a tall order. It's going to be at Y30 or roughly Y30, about Y29 is actually where we're going to start building it because we want to spawn the gateways themselves at y30 and so we are down here and we need to get just a little bit lower if possible <laughs> i'm gonna try my best and we need to stay on this zero coordinate on the x-axis so we need to start from actually kind of over here yeah we need to be about on this side and we want to find the negative 1024 coordinate so i'm going to be keeping my fireworks firmly in my offhand for this as we make our way down here it looks like the island is going to bottom out a little bit too close to where i want to be i guess we could dig down a little bit further the alternative to this would be to drop a bucket of water and using the jump button to kind of pull yourself back up again if you wanted to just kind of slowly lower yourself down to an area where you can start placing blocks of course i have my shears with me i've got my unbreaking mending shears because they were the closest ones i had to hand and we can uh shear some of the leaves as we go we do just need to get ourselves out about uh yeah 100 or so blocks in that direction to get this started and i think yep okay we're at y30 which means we are placing these blocks here at y29 and we're on that zero axis if we go here we need to be either side of the zero coordinate for this so we need to be at negative zero and then positive zero which is a weird sentence to be saying mathematically but you guys know what i mean okay let's shear some of these leaves we probably won't get all of these back which is unfortunate but we just need to bridge out to that negative 1024 coordinates so we can make a start here and this is the part of the video where i wear out my little finger holding down the shift key because <laughs> goodness me it is nerve-wracking bridging out over the void even with fireworks in my offhand Especially if I accidentally right click when I've run out of leaves in my main hand and I end up letting off a bunch of fireworks. But as you can see, we don't have any endermen spawning on this bridge of leaves because it's not a spawnable block for them, which makes it perfect for this because we want to be able to look up every now and again. And if you look up directly at an enderman, chances are they're going to aggro on you and you're going to have a bad time. So probably best to use something like this or a transparent block if you've got it available to you. But leaves are just nice and cheap, nice and easy to make. So after a whole bunch of bridging, here we are. We are at negative 1024 and you'll notice in the chunk data, we are right on the edge of a chunk. Now, if we open up the F3G view where we can see the boundaries of the chunks, you will see right here we are at the boundary, the kind of intersection of four chunks here. We've got one there, one there, one there, and one there, and I'm holding shift so hard right now. <laughs> so what we want to do from here is start a bridge that kind of goes outwards towards the end island in the boundary of these kind of four chunks. Obviously, we're going to leave these two chunks behind, but we're going to cross over this boundary as we go. And that's going to be what determines where the end gateway is going to spawn. It's basically anywhere between here and about 700 or so blocks away from the island is where we can choose for our end gateway to spawn. And I think we're going to do this basically as far out into the void as we can, because these are ideal locations for producing enderman farms. If you imagine having a complete void around you with no other little straggling islands here and there that enderman could potentially spawn on within a 128 block radius, that's what's going to guarantee that you get the best rates for your enderman farm. And while you can do this by bridging out into the void from the central island, I think it's just cooler to be able to manipulate one of the end gateways into spawning wherever you want. Want. Also makes travel to it very easy because all you need to do is throw an ender pearl through that end gateway and you end up in your enderman farm. So from here we're going to be continuing this platform until we reach a, a negative Z coordinate of about 760. 
And from there, we are going to create a little platform that's going to convince the end gateway that that is the best place for it to spawn. Okay, so after a lot of bridging, here I am. And as you can see, the end islands are almost invisible out there in the void, which is terrifying, but also pretty darn cool. Now, what we're going to do is create a few spawning locations here that the end gateway could potentially spawn at. It's going to be in one of these four chunks arranged around the minus 768767 kind of axis. What we want to do is come into each of these chunks just a little bit, maybe a couple of blocks here and there, and place an end stone at Y30 or above. So here and here it's going to go, and then we'll go a couple of blocks into this chunk as well, and we'll place one here and we'll place one here. And in theory, our end gateway should be able to spawn near one of each of these because the end stone is what convinces it that there's a landmass here that it can generate next to. Now, before I go any further, I should acknowledge that all of this information has come to me from a video by a creator called Nembon MC, who you guys might have heard of if you're familiar with some of the larger multiplayer servers out there. He's designed a lot of farm designs that people use, and he's a very, very good technical Minecrafter. So I will link you to his video in the description if you want a creative tutorial of this that goes over things a little bit faster and in a little bit more detail because he knows the ins and outs of this game like nobody else. So I recommend checking out Nembon's video if you want to know a little bit more about the mechanics of this work, of how this works, and because I might not have explained things 100% accurately. So probably best to double check with him <laughs> before you do any of this yourself. But in theory, now if we kill the Ender Dragon and it spawns the Northern Gateway, we should find ourselves with an End Gateway return portal spawning around here. Now, of course, this big bridge over here is not strictly necessary to us anymore because we have elytra, we have other means of getting around, and pretty soon we'll be able to teleport to and from this location. But right now, it's probably worth saving the durability on our elytra and f uh, saving the amount of rockets I've got here, traveling back to the island, finding ourselves a gateway that we can get back home to. And then in future, we could take down this bridge entirely, but it might even be worth saving just to have something as a bit of a safety net in case for whatever reason, we run out of elytra and fireworks and enderpearls and that kind of stuff. But here we are at the edge of that area. That is back at the negative 1024. Let's go find ourselves an end gateway and then let's go kill ourselves a whole bunch of ender dragons. If you want the icing on the cake, by the way, there is an end city right here that has a boat and I haven't even raided this one. So <laughs> I could probably come back a little bit later and take care of this. This might even be a really cool place to start setting up the custom biome that we're going to be bringing all of the villagers and stuff out to. But that's something for later in the video. For now, let's go kill some dragons. And so after 10 ender dragon fights, yes, that is right. I had to fight the dragon 10 times in order to do it. And as you can see, the gateways around here are definitely plentiful in number at this point. We have ourselves a northern gateway and I have been through it and I have verified this. But just to show you guys on camera that this is the case, we're going to go through this together using an ender pearl. And it's going to spawn us out there at our little locations up in the void. And of course, I didn't bring any ladders with me, so we're going to have to pillar up. How about I pillar up using these iron bars just for the sake of it because wow you get a lot of iron bars when you do a dragon fight 10 times there we go the gateway lies before us and hopefully we can get this ender pearl through it first time uh, hup. nope never happens first time try again there we go and it's just ender pearled me into the void but thankfully the ender pearl doesn't matter in the void now here we are the gateway spawns you on the ground it doesn't drop you from height which is good because wow dropping out of the sky in here is going to be a dangerous game but it will land you here on these four end stone blocks and that generated directly over the top of this end stone block here and we are out here in the void at the coordinates that we specified before so this all worked splendidly well and in theory this is possible with the other gateways as well with the ones that are more on the diagonal axes you just have to do a little bit more complicated plotting of exactly where that line ends up it makes a lot of sense to do this while we still had the north gateway available to us and boy it took 10 tries in order to get this one when you're trying for something in this game and it doesn't happen it can be a little get a little bit frustrating but now we have an easy way to get to a platform 
out here in the void and it is possible still to bridge out from the central end island or any of the outer islands if you want to build a platform in the void like this anyway but i love the fact that we now have this end gateway that will transport us here anytime and this is where we're going to be setting up our enderman farm but we're not going to do that in today's episode in fact I'm actually going to call today's episode here. I think we have done enough. I think just the fact that we managed to get ourselves an end gateway all the way out here is a bit of an accomplishment. And I want to say thank you again to Nembon for making such a great video about how to do this. Go and check that video out, guys. Once again, it is linked in the description. But for now, we're going to call it a day for this episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide. And tomorrow or Friday, we will come back and build the Enderman farm. Thank you so much for watching this episode. My name has been Pixorifs. Don't forget to leave a like on this episode if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more. And I will see you guys soon. Take care. Bye for now.